I was born in Kikenian, Republic of Ireland, 1954, January the 18th. I was two pound 10 ounces weight. I was in an incubator for, I don't know how long, eight weeks or something. Or that, that was one of the first incubators ever, I think, that came out back in 54. And I wasn't even supposed to live for no more than six or eight months. So I've been in boy time for the past 59 years. <laughs> My grandparents, I only had one grandmother alive when I was like eight or nine, so I don't know, so I remember it was her. She always wore a black shawl and had a walking stick. And uh, for some reason, or every time she met you, she had to tell you off about something. But that's the only memories really I have of a grandmother. The rest of them were passed on before I... Yeah, yeah. yeah I came from the country in, in Kilkenny and uh, we used to have a few pigs and we had a few sheep. We had a nest and cart, yeah. And then the nearest village was two miles away. You'd have to you know, go once a week and get a shopping or whatever, or, yeah. But also that time you had vans to come around selling meat and veg, yeah. And selling clothes and you, like the clothes you pay so much a month. You got a, a suit for whatever, three pound fifty and you paid two shillings a week until it was paid off. <laughs> and um, I walked to school every morning, three miles before I went to school, and then I milked seven cows by hand for my neighbor who had a farm next door. And then we came back in the evening at four o'clock and milked the cows again, and took the milk down. The milk was picked up each morning at the end of the laneway, yeah, by a, a truck or whatever. And uh, yeah, so it was long days. I was only like six years of age, seven then. My father worked on a farm. At that time, your, your mum never worked. She just stayed at home and cooked and done the housework and that kind of thing. And did you have any brothers or sisters? I had, uh, yeah, I had one brother and three sisters. But I was the youngest, so the next oldest to me uh, was uh, 10 years older than me. So I was virtually yeah. an only that they were up and gone before I sort of knew them. School, yeah, school was, 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 had its ups and downs. Like I said, we had to walk three miles to the nearest school, cross the fields, and pick, pick wood on the way for the fire. There was one big open fire at the top of the classroom. And if you didn't bring the wood, you'd have to sit at the end. You wouldn't get near the fire at all for heat. And your lunch was, um, the teacher used to buy the kettle on the open fire, and then you'd have a hot drink like, uh, Oxo or Bovra or that kind of a drink and sandwiches, yeah. And um, there was only like one a class for juniors and then a class for uh, seniors. One teacher in each classroom, and they covered everything. And we used to main uh, winter time. They would have uh, would have a turf fire, yeah, like peat type of thing. But the laugh of the day was uh, you get two or three chaps with you to bring in the turf and put it in the big shed when it got delivered. And it could take two or three days really to put it in. But you'd have two lads bringing it in and two more lads taking it out the back and putting it back in the heap again. So you, you had extra days. So yeah, we used to have a, you know, we used to have a laugh. I used to do a baking, yeah. Mother had a, well, mother, mother used to bake everything on the open fire in a, a proper old skillet pot where you had heat underneath and then you put the, put the uh, coals on top as well so you had a heat, even heat all around the pot and she used to bake all her own bread, soda bread and different sort of, you know, loaves and whatever, yeah. I went, I left school at uh, 13 and then I went to Rockwell College that was um, in County Tipperary, it was a self-sufficient run college. It had uh, guys training to be chefs, guys training to be waiters, managers. It had guys training to be uh, farmers, agricultural college. It had, um, then it had 2,000 students studying various, you know, subjects, whether it was maths, English. Most of them were foreign students from um, Germany and Russia, France. So each day we, in the classroom, You'd, you'd prepare food for four people 
in, in, in the cast room one day and the next day you go to the main kitchen and you prepare it for a thousand people or whatever. And it was broke down into sections where you had a section on lada, a section on fruit and veg, a section on sweets and pastries. And um, we used to kill our own pigs and make our own bacon. Did you find that difficult? It was difficult because you had to get up at four o'clock in the morning and go to the farm, pick up six or eight pigs, you know, you were only 13 years of age with another four lads, you know. And then you would just, um, you had this special type of gun and you shot the pig in the head and this spike came out and the pig went down and you stabbed them on the chest and, and you, you hung them up in the air and then you cut them down, washed them down and shaved them. Then by that evening, five o'clock that evening, they'd be in the big vats and they'd be, after three weeks then they could use the bacon and you could use the sides of hindquarters and whatever and ham and everything. There was no hot water in your shower or anything, it was cold showers every morning. And then you worked all day until three o'clock and you had a break from three to half four and you had to play rugby and then back to work again at five o'clock. And then you had, you worked until half seven and you had supervised study from half seven until half eight and then you were allowed to watch television in a big rec recreation room that's if you could see it in smoke <laughs> and it was more than black and white television and then you were in bed every night by 10 o'clock lights out 10 15 and then that was seven days a week now funny enough i went to a, a chef's reunion not a reunion but a chef's conference about eight years ago and i heard his voice in there and chatting in the room and uh, it was a chap, he was working for the same hotel group as me in Stevenage. And there was a guy called Billy Little. And so I met him, but I haven't seen him ever since now. Uh, a lot of the guys that were in my group, I think, passed on. Yeah. Uh, chefs don't live to a, a large age, or a good age, really. <laughs> for some reason why, I don't know. But, uh, you seldom see a chef in his 80s. to my home city, Kilkenny, and I worked there for two years in a hotel called New Park Hotel. And the first thing I'd done was in the kitchen, I had to clean out the deep fat fryer. And the, at that time, the, the floor was covered in sawdust, kitchen floors. And I cleaned the fryer out, tipped in 40 litres of oil back in the fryer, forgot to put a stopper in the fryer. And the head chef was floating sawdust under his legs. So that wasn't a good start off. Then I went to a place called the Three Lakes in Killarney and then after that I went to the Addo Heights in Killarney and then I went to a place to follow down in, called Dingle, the Skelly Hotel in Dingle on the seafront and we were there for two years and then we came here in 1973. I ended up moving from Ireland to England because I had family over here and uh, one of my sisters lived out in just beyond Amesbury near Pastone Henge. And um, we were here for uh, three weeks, and then I said to my girlfriend, as Dan, uh, I'll see if I can, he might stay over Christmas and get a job and see what happens. So I came into Salisbury on the bus on a Wednesday, and there was a job going at the Rose and Crown for a sous chef. And I came and then I started on the Friday. And then she started on the Monday as a waitress. That time we used to live in the hotel that had accommodation for female staff and for male staff. Yeah. They had two houses across the road and the male staff rooms are where we are now. Yeah. And you got paid weekly. You work six and a half days a week. And I think the first week's pay was I think it was twenty eight pounds. Yeah. I met my wife in New Park Hotel in Kilkenny. Okay. Yes, and she was She's a couple of years older than me. And then we came to England. We went to work in Kerry then, in a few hotels, as I said. And then we came to England and we got married in 1977. Uh, we have a son and a daughter. We have a son in London. Um, he works for, he's in the banking, investment banking. He's married with uh, twins, a year old, and a young lad, uh, three and a half years old. And I have a daughter who's married in Salisbury, and uh, uh, she has a daughter at 11, and she has a son.
son five. So grandchildren is a big part of my time off. Um, well, it's, in this trade, it's 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 a bit difficult being a parent because you're working split shifts and you're working weekends. And um, I haven't had Christmas day off ever in forty years. Um, so my wife, she didn't work until the kids were over twelve years old, and then she done part time. She's still here now, working part time here, but she's she did work for a friend's life. And she's retired from there now, but she still works here part time, three or four nights a week, and sometimes weekends, um, whatever they need her, sort of thing. Yeah. And she still now she takes the kids to school in the morning and she picks them up in the afternoon and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we're kept busy. You enjoy being grandparent? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. There's two loves in my life, and that's family and the Rosen Crown. Yeah. And, um, Otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed, you know, 40 years. You, know, you have to like what you're doing and have a bit of passion. And, uh, you know, you get out with what you put into it. And it's that satisfaction. Well, we've got a whole revolution of menus for a start off. The price is totally different now. And um, you have more food available than what you have then. You have more choice of fish, meats, fruit and veg. Completely different all of you. Uh, when I first came, we, we had the milk delivered daily in a churn from two sisters who had two cows just up on the water meadows up behind us. And they came each morning with a churn and you took out three gallons of milk for the day or whatever you wanted. And, yeah. The fish came on a bicycle from the market square from a, a fishmonger called Mike Fisheries. It's no longer there. And that came daily like your daily fish you had every day. And um, we used to buy some uh, sheep from across the river every when they were in season. They were Abraham sheep. It's like a bit like goat. It's very salty meat. They're fed every two weeks. You have to give them seaweed in their diet. And then he he used to work here as a porter. The guy that owns them, and he um, he um, sort of slowly got rid of them. So we, that phased out. But I was just looking at the old menus here in 1974. You, you could have a fillet steak for three pound twenty, yeah, and um, smoked salmon for one pound ten pence. Yeah. You could have avocado vinaigrette for one pound twenty. Um, pepper sirloin steak, steak Diane, five pounds, which was then it was cooked in the restaurant. It was cooked on flambe, flambe lamps, and Garrigan service. We had um, uh, sweet trolleys in the restaurant then with like eight, ten sweets on a trolley. We had cheese trolley with 15 different cheeses. We had a um, port trolley with cigars. And obviously after a number of years that phased out because of uh, legislation came in where you could have to have stuff refrigerated and at a certain temperature. So um, that's, that, that went by the wayside now everything comes from the kitchen. But then we also had, over the years, we had um, a la carte menus, we had table d'hôte menus, we had special menus, we had uh, various, we was catered for functions of weddings. At that time, the wedding would eat at like half past two or two o'clock in the afternoon or one o'clock, and then they'd be gone on your restaurant by five o'clock in the evening. Now they don't eat until five o'clock in the evening. Um, we'd done special menus for like the Queen's celebrations, when Diane and Charles got married, we had a special menu in for that. Uh, we used to do dinner dances every um, Saturday night. We'd sell tickets in advance and we'd do like 100 people on a dinner dance. At that time in Salisbury, the pubs didn't do food. All they done was just you wouldn't get a pick a leg in a pub. Um, and now it's their main income for all pubs is food. There was only about five places in Salisbury then that actually done like dinner dances or anything like that, or Christmas parties that had a room. But now food, when you cook food nowadays compared to a while ago, it, uh, it tastes better, you have different ovens, you have ovens cooked, you know, combi ovens, on, you can have a combination of steam and dry heat, and your meat don't shrink, that kind of thing. So it holds more flavor and it's not put into a dry oven and roasted for two hours and, you know, like a bit of charcoal, lost every bit of flavor it's had or whatever. 
and um, everything is plated now, everything goes out on a plate, whereas be before it was uh, silver service, and by the time we got served at the table, sometimes it was gone uh, uh, lukewarm or whatever. Um, but now everything is everything is made on, on, on ha in house, everything is fresh, all our pies and desserts, everything is made in house, all our sauces, soups. I like cooking fish and meat, yeah, fish dishes, yeah. There's an old favourite that's very good for functions and that's like a fillet of beef wellington but it's gone so expensive now that like £25 a kilo, um, people just can't afford. I think most of the fillet of beef now is exported out of England and uh, but it, it, it was a, a favourite many years ago, the same as we have a Baked Alaska many years ago was on as a, a main dish for functions and we have a sweet dish on the menu now, it's individual baked Alaska and people is, is going back in the 60s and 70s, you know, and it's a favourite. A lot of the old dishes are coming back and hold some good food, like we make our own uh, pork, cider and apple pies, we make our own steak, ale pies, yeah. We've actually done... Um, an exhibition at a food fair in Salisbury back uh, five weeks ago and we sold uh, 310 pies there or we met them up and they were gone within a couple of hours. In the new restaurant near River's Edge we've extended the restaurant out we've um, built a nice big new long bar full of lights, bright, cheerful, welcoming before it was dark and dingy and there was no light. Uh, now we have one menu it's priced to suit everybody and you can come in and sit where you like if you want to sit on the windowsill you can sit on the windowsill if you want to sit on the table in the garden you can sit in the garden sit where you like and eat and spend as much as you want you can spend from five pound upwards so there's something there for everybody we have a now we we have a few more rooms we have um, where the Avon bar was is two new bedrooms and uh, the people used it big long bar at the back of the restaurant. We still have the oak bar where the fire is and a small tidy bar for residents. Nice and cosy in there if they want to go in and sit there or if they want to go to the main bar they can do that. Even though it was all army around here I never had any, not, nobody ever said question me and you know we, we done, we had confidence here with top of the UKLF, you know, land force commands, we had the head of Northern Ireland had a conference here where we had armed guards and all the doors and the rooms. We had uh, the hotel searched four days before they came and uh, guards put on all the doors where we had a, you know, conferences. Um, we used to have Edward Heath used to come and eat here four or five times a week. Um, he was the Prime Minister then at the time. Uh, so I had never had any, nobody ever questioned where I came from or what I did. I, when my parents were alive in Ireland, I suppose you'd look on that as home, but when your parents pass on then, and you have children of your own and you have grandchildren, well, you know, I've worked here for the past 40 years. I worked for 28 years before I had a half day off ill. Um, so, I, uh, as satisfaction and dedication, absolutely, you know. And you can say that I, I, I didn't see through a project you know, if you follow a project through for 40 odd years, you obviously see it to the end. Favourite song? Favourite song is an Irish song, yeah. It's called After All These Years. And it's probably appropriate because I've been here for 40 years. <laughs> colour? Favourite colour? Favourite colour is blue. Okay. Favourite book or film? Favourite book is, I, I bought books many years ago and they were written by the Rue brothers and they had a big influence on my life, yeah. Would they be the professionally, would they be the ones who had the biggest? Yeah, yeah. Favourite film? Favourite film was, I was there when they were making it and it was a film called Ryan's Daughter which was made in Dingham and I was there when the cast all stayed in the hotel so I, that was always stuck in the back of my mind. And if you, yeah. if you could have a day trip anywhere, where where's your some places you've been, favourite place that you've, you've kind of enjoyed going? I love going to Stratford and Avon. I don't know why, but I just do. I would say to my grandson and, and granddaughter, you know, 
go through life and do the best you can, you know, and always be kind to other people and don't don't ever tell lies and you know, you'll do well. And be to treat other people the same as you would like to be treated by them. My darling, come to me Sit you down easily And rest a while Near the soft firelight Cold is the night But warm is my heart with pride Having you by my side You're still my guiding light After all these years Your soft assuring ways The rock I lean on Saw me through my darkest days When all hope had gone You're still the only one I'll ever hold near And I love you After all these years